In today's Back for Blood video, I'm going to show you every single one of the nine mutations that is in the game right now. I'm going to tell you how to counter them and how to tell them apart. Because one of the things that makes this a little confusing is there's three categories. There's Tall Boy, Stinger, and Reeker. And within each of those categories, there is a Tall Boy named the Tall Boy, a Stinger named the Stinger, and a Reeker named the Reeker. That's like having three cats, and one of them's named Larry, one of them's named Daisy, and one of them's named Cat. It's a little confusing. <laughs> So, I'm going to go through each one of these and then explain them to you so you understand everything there is to know about them. So, speaking of Tallboy, let's start with the Tallboy, the original Tallboy. The Tallboy has one major attack, and what that attack is, is a charge forward and a slam. You definitely don't want to be in the way of a Tallboy slam. Tallboys are the only ones that are going to charge and slam in PvE mode. So if you see Tallboy at the bottom of your subtitles there, you better watch out because he's coming to smack you. Now, in terms of how a Tallboy looks... Tallboy has a nice little weak spot on his back right shoulder. Also, something that really helps you differentiate them is if you take a look at the Tallboy's chest, it's very gray, very white, washed out. Also, if you see the Tallboy's back, he doesn't really have a whole lot going on in terms of spikes. These are things that are really going to differentiate the Tallboy from the Bruiser. Now, my recommendation with Tallboys and how to deal with them is just get out of the way because if you hear them coming, you do not want to be on the edge of that slam. Tallboys end runs. They are, to me, the scariest mutation in the game. Tallboys don't F around. The last thing you want to get caught doing is trying to do one of these to a Tallboy as he's charging at you. Just leave, man. Just kite. Get out of the way. You don't have to sit there and back up and then watch yourself die rather than just getting out of the way. Another thing you can do with your teammates is if one of them gets on the other side of the Tallboy, there's a chance the Tallboy's going to turn around and start chasing them, which gives you free shots on the weak spot of the Tallboy. One of the things that the Tallboys are very, very vulnerable to is in PvE is Molotovs. You want to have a Molotov on your team if you see something like a ferocious or a monstrous Tallboy. Reason being is that as Tallboys become ferocious or monstrous, they become resistant to explosive damage. However, Molotovs still do bonus damage to a Tallboy. Now, you're not going to see it here, but at a PvE match, it is extensive. And then speaking of monstrous, as long as I'm thinking about it, a really easy way to tell if the mutation you're going against is monstrous is you see those little wiggly worms coming out of its head that means he's monstrous that means he's the most upgraded version of that variant that you're gonna find aka very scary <laughs> also i have armor on my weak spot here if you damage a armor on a weak spot all you're doing is taking away the armor's hp you're not hurting the tall boy at all bullet pen does not work on armor let's get that finally cleared up bullet pen does not work on armor you shoot the armor the armor breaks the armor has its own hp Okay? You don't damage the tall boy by shooting the armor. You don't get any weird bonuses when you shoot the armor. You're just trying to basically kill the armor. And once you do, it'll fall off, and then you can start shooting the weak spot. And to show you what I mean about the armor, I'm going to shoot the armor right now, but then watch the health on the tall boy. I did a bunch of damage to the armor, but the tall boy didn't take any damage. Did a bunch of damage to the armor, but the tall boy didn't take any damage. But now, after enough shots, the armor breaks off. So if I were to shoot that same area, suddenly the tall boy starts taking damage. And to really iterate just how scary these monstrous tall boys are, just like get away from them because they will smash the ever living daylights out of you. And not only will they smash you, they can keep smashing. They don't quit. You see how they can just keep coming? You, you, you gotta get away from them. You can't just sit there and stare at them. So now let's talk about bruisers. And the main difference visually between a bruiser and a tall boy is that they're just much darker. Much, much darker. You know, he had the really pale looking chest on the tall boy. Well, on the bruiser, it's much darker. And what you'll also see is he has spikes on his shoulders. It is clear as day to tell the difference between a tall boy and a bruiser if you know those two things. Bruiser's got way more spikies, and they're just a much darker variant of the tall boy. But to be fair, something that makes it confusing is that they both have a weak spot on the backside. Something to know about bruisers in PvE. Again, this is a big PvE thing. We'll do swarm on another day. Bruisers only ever walk towards you. They don't charge. That's a huge difference between the two, okay? So if you see Bruiser in your subtitles, know that they're only going to walk towards you. They're never going to charge. What makes that a little confusing is in Swarm, they can charge a little bit, okay? But in PvE, they're never going to charge you. They just do this little thing. The main attacks that a Bruiser has is an overhead slam. Also, they have this frenzy. And anything within this little area is going to be hit by the Frenzy. In fact, let me show you what it looks like from the Bruiser's perspective. So if I press Frenzy here, you'll see that everything within this little AOE red circle is going to be taking damage. So to prove it, if I get a little bit closer, 
suddenly Jim is taking damage. So if you're in a PvE match, really, all you gotta do is just stay away from the dang thing. <laughs> all right? Because all he's ever gonna do is walk towards you. So if he's walking, you can just stay away from him. Now, he might be a little bit faster than you if you don't have any movement speed on. So in that situation, you just turn and you run and you get away. And the same concept applies to the bruiser as it did to the tall boy. If you get on the other side of the bruiser, the bruiser might turn around and then you get a free shot on its weak spot. And now, I don't think this would be a good guide to the creatures unless we talked about their stats a little bit. And don't worry, I know we still have to cover the crusher. But let's go on over to Staddy.net so you can see what I'm talking about in terms of stats. So, Staddy.net, your link will be in the description. I'm going to go ahead and I click written stats here and then I click nightmare to see what the nightmare stats are. Things to know is that ferocious and monsters ridden have more stumble resistance than their regular counterparts so this applies to common tall boys recurve stingers also when you're on nightmare they have more stumble resistance so put this into your calculations if you're going to try to min max if you scroll down a little bit do the bruisers the crushers and the tall boys what you'll see is the bruiser has way more hp than the crushers and the tall boys do also the bruiser has a decreased weak spot multiplier compared to the crushers and the tall boys so what this means is they're basically the tank very very meaty they're harder to stumble they're harder to take down but they're slow so if you want to go see all these stats on all of these different creatures i keep wanting to say pokemon <laughs> on any of these different creatures <laughs> go ahead to steady.net so you can get a good idea of what you need to do in terms of damage and in the case of the bruiser here its standard hp is 1021 its ferocious hp is 1276 and its monstrous hp is 1531 i do believe that weak spot multiplier of the creature is multiplicative with the cards that you have so keep that in mind this is a really really nice thing to hit on any of these creatures one other thing to note is that weak shot multipliers are different when it comes to stumbling i have a whole video about stumbling if you want to get the basics on stumbling but each creature has a little bit different number when it comes to stumble which is a really big deal in the crusher you see how it's 2.5 here versus 1.5 when you're just doing body damage a couple of other things to know about bruisers as they become scary and monstrous they will actually <laughs> cause you to do reduced damage to them if you're too close to them they have this fear aura so stay away from the bruisers especially as they level up another thing to know is while they frenzy they can heal so while they're doing this once they level up a little bit become ferocious or monstrous inside of a pve game you'll see a little green glow come out of them which means that they're healing while they're doing that and if you have knowledge's power on you'll actually see the health bar climb up which is really interesting and now onto the crusher it's really easy to tell that you're going up against a crusher because they have a very defined feature that the tall boys and the bruisers don't have and it's that they have this big turkey gobbler at the bottom of their neck that's their weak spot that is completely unique to the crusher so if you see that you know the crusher's coming now what does the crusher do well the crusher crushes if he grabs you you're in trouble okay something to know about the crusher is that it does not have an overhead slam attack so you do not need to worry about getting smashed so frankly a really easy way to deal with the crusher is to just do circles around him just like this because the crusher is going to keep trying to circle around to keep grabbing you and if you just keep circling around his i guess left side but you know you go to your right he's going to keep missing because they just can't rotate as fast as you can you don't need to have any extra movement speed or anything like that you just got to keep doing circles around and then as they try to grab you you're already out of the way of the crusher so they're just going to keep missing you just keep spinning around them and they're just going to keep missing and it's kind of funny to do that to them in pve <laughs> a trick for tall boys and bruisers if you have to deal with them in close quarters is the door trick or the ren trick as i like to call it because my buddy ren does this all the time so what ren does is he will peek out a little bit to try to bait out a swing from the tall boy or the bruiser and then hide back into the room that he's in and what this does is it causes the tall boy to miss so it'll look a little something like this you go up boom and then he swings and then you just absolutely dodge all the damage and with all mutations be on the lookout for things that can explode that can be red barrels that can be cars that can be propane tanks gasoline what have you environment is the best way to deal with mutations now i did say before that tall boys get a little resistant to explosives but something like this is probably still going to take them out or at least severely damage them so now let's move on to the stinger category this includes stingers hawkers and stalkers i'm going to start with the stinger so the way you can tell you have a stinger in front of you is it's very pale it is the most pale out of the three of them. So this is the stinger. We'll go ahead and we'll take a look at the hawker here. This one here is the hawker. Much darker looking. Has a bigger looking weak spot as well. And then here is the stalker. The stalker has the big old brain looking thing. With all three of these variants, they are very easy to stumble. And they have low HP. If you go ahead and you take a look at Staddy here, you'll see that a standard stinger only has 160 HP. And a monstrous one only has 241. It is 
not out of the question to go ahead and be one-shotting these creatures, especially if you hit them in the weak spot. They all have pretty incredible weak spot multipliers. Another really important thing to note is they have really low stumble HP, which makes them really easy to stumble. So really all you need to do to counter any one of these guys is just hit them. Just find them and blast them. Just whoop, bam. And they're probably going to die. Stingers pretty much have one big thing. They spit. They spit, they spit and they spit and they spit and they spit and they spit pretty fast. So be careful. They used to spit faster when they were perched. But they just spit. They'll walk around. They're like, I don't care. I'm spitting. So be careful. They can. They're pretty mobile. Something else that they like to do is they like to sit up in trees or walls. So if you ever see this happen and they're perched like that, make sure you take them out. It makes them a really easy stationary target. However, something to know if you do see them perched up on something, they cannot be stumbled for whatever reason. So just make sure you obliterate them. Get them off the map. I hate them. But again, the main thing stingers do is they just do damage by spitting. No other fancy tricks. It's just... Bleh, 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 bleh. So let's talk about hawkers. They're the ones that got the really nasty spit. So they can jump around like this and chase around and get a good position on you. But the main thing, the hallmark of a hawker is this sound. Hear that? When they make that sound, that means that they're about to spit at you. And if they hit you, you're stuck. And you can't do anything. You have to have somebody punch you out. Or do you have to have a stun gun to get out of this? So how do you deal with a hawker? Well, similarly to the stinger, if you just blast it, that's a great way to deal with it. However, if you hear this sound, just get out of the way and let it spit. If you're in a PvE match, they changed it so that hawkers have a cooldown of eight seconds after they hit you or if they miss. So basically, a hawker can't do anything for the next eight seconds. So if you dodge a spit, just walk up to him. Heck, you can go ahead and give him a high five and then go ahead and blast him. They don't stand a chance if they miss. They're really easy to deal with. Just make sure you're listening for that sound cue. So let's talk about stalkers. Stalkers are the ones that look like they have a big old brain on top of their head. And what stalkers do is they try to find you, they creep up on you, and then they jump you. And if they jump you, well, then you're going to die eventually because they'll just choke you out. Okay? So you want to make sure you don't get choked out by a stalker. Something that makes stalkers really scary is even if they hit your teammate, but you're standing next to your teammate, it's going to cause you to stumble and then basically not have any control of your character for a few seconds until you snap out of it. And then you can go ahead and try to help. And that is a huge period of vulnerability to take damage from other mutations, other creatures, just to make it so you can't help your teammate, etc. So how do you deal with a stalker? In my opinion, they're not that hard to deal with. It just requires a little bit of patience. So I want you to... Look really closely here. You see how the stalker's stance is going to change? So what this means is he's looking to jump somewhere. He crouches and he puts his little arms to his side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump. Whee! Right? Now there's another stance that they do. And pay close attention to the difference. They'll also make a sound. So listen. You hear that? Yeah! Like creepy cat sound. That means that they're getting ready to jump on you and grab you. Also, they stick their arms out farther. They don't stick them down to their sides. They stick them out like a Superman pose or a T pose. They do that. Once they release, they're going to try to get you. So you got to be really, really careful. If you hear that sound with a T pose, get out of the way. Try to dodge it. And a really easy way to deal with them is when they do this pose. They usually pause for a second. They don't just jump immediately. So during that pause, you'll get used to timing this out. You can just be like, okay. Because they just stand still for you. It's very, very easy. As long as you have a good shot, they will give you a whole second to go ahead and just blast them right in the face. So now let's move on to the final class of creatures, the Reekers. We got the Reeker, the Exploder, and the Wretch. So let's start with what the Reeker looks like. The Reeker doesn't have any weak spots, okay? Not a single one. No weak spot damage to be found. It's just a big old blob booger looking thing. And the main thing that a Reeker does is charges around like a bowling ball. Okay, now that's very different from the Exploders. And one thing you'll notice between a lot of these variants is there's more of a pale variant and a darker variant. And the Exploders are the darker variant of the Reekers. Another thing they have going on is that big old belly button. Okay, at least I guess it's on his chest, but I always call it the belly button. So Exploders got the belly button. Reekers got nothing. What do the wretches have? The wretches have that big helmet brain looking thing. That's how you can tell it's a wretch. The ones that spit, they have a helmet. See? Blah, 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 blah. Really easy way to tell that's a wretch. So now that you know how they all look, let's talk about some things to know about them. In my opinion, the scariest one to deal with here is the Reeker, the one that doesn't have any weak spots. Okay? The reason why the Reeker is scary to deal with is because if a Reeker explodes too close to you, what it's going to do 
is it's going to call a horde. Reekers are the only ones that do this, by the way. Okay? Only Reekers. So if I were to have a Reeker next to me, what you'll see is he'll explode, push me around. I don't take damage. I don't take damage. However, if I was in a PvE match, a horde would be summoned. So let's say this dummy here was my teammate. What I don't want to do right now is shoot the Reeker. <laughs> because if the Reeker's low and I blow up the Reeker next to my teammate, we're going to have to deal with a horde. So what you want to do is you want to wait and try to move the Reeker around until he's not next to any of your teammates. And when he's not next to any of your teammates, then you can take him out. You're safe, okay? That's the main counterplay to a Reeker. Another thing you can do to counter these guys especially, but really any sort of mutation in the game or any common, is to create elevation or to keep putting obstacles in between you and that creature. So if I have something chasing me, I want to run around, make it so it also has to climb over stuff because common and mutations are extremely slow at climbing. But specifically in the case of the Reeker, if I go ahead and I climb up on top of these things here and the Reeker just was about to charge me, what you'll see is he misses. And he has to go through that whole charge and then suddenly he has to go ahead and try to climb up and then chase after you. And at which point you can already be halfway out of dodge. Reekers will not explode unless you kill them. The only one out of the three here, let me see if I can bring up the three again. The only one out of the three that will explode on their own is the exploder, the one with the belly button, okay? Reekers and wretches will not explode on their own. Only exploders will. So let's talk about the exploder. What does the exploder do? The exploder explodes. <laughs> and he does a lot of damage if he explodes next to you. And he blows everything up around him. And actually, there's a lot of different things to know about the exploder. They can be very useful. But they have two different types of charges. Okay? One of them is kind of like the Reeker charge. They're just going around. That's not the one you need to be afraid of. The one you need to be afraid of is when they put their arms out at their sides. Because once that is done, they're going to explode no matter what. They're gonna hit you or they're not gonna hit you. Either way, they're gonna explode. And you'll see it looks a little something like this. So he puts his arms out like that and then boom! So usually what people will do with an exploder is they try to get close enough to it to piss it off and make it so it does that explosion charge because it only gets one of those. So what you'll see is if I get a little close to him and then it'll try to charge, I'm like, okay, bye, 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 bye. And then he explodes over there and I'm fine. Some things to know about exploders. If you are too close to them, even if they aren't using their exploder charge, they will damage you. Ouchies. You don't want to be too close. This is the only one of the three that will do that, where the impact will cause damage to you. So make sure you stay away from them. The wretch kind of will do that, but that's because it makes a spleh all over the place. And it's the spleh that's damaging you, not the explosion itself. Other things to know about exploders is not only will they damage you if you are too close to them, but they will damage everything else around them, which can be very useful. Now, usually what ends up happening is it causes you to lose a barrel that you didn't want to lose. Reekers will also cause you to lose a barrel you didn't want to lose. You want to pull them away from the explosives that you want to use. Wretches, Reekers, Exploders, all three of them will eat up barrels. But something that the exploder will do is that not only is it going to take away barrels and stuff like that, if you have it next to another mutation, like let's say a tall boy or a stinger or just the rest of the horde, if you blow an exploder up next to them, those creatures are going to take damage. So you can use exploders to your benefit by exploding them next to other common. And one other really important thing on the note of these exploders here is that exploders and wretches have pretty low stumble HP. They're really easy to stumble. It's only 60 stumble HP and you get a bonus if you hit them in their weak spot. And I guess on that note, something I forgot to mention, the Reekers don't have a weak spot, so you don't get bonus stumble against them if you hit them in the weak spot, because there's nothing to hit. And they also just have more stumble HP than their cousins here do anyway, so be careful with these Reekers. But on the note of the Exploder, the reason why this really, really matters is because you can stumble them out of their charge that they do, okay? So if I have a good enough gun, I can't stumble here in practice mode, but if I had a good enough gun and I hit them in the head, that will cause them to stumble out of their explosive charge, which allows you or your teammates to go ahead and get some distance. Really, that goes for all of these big beefy boys. You can stumble them out of their charge, but it's especially a big deal against this guy because if you're too close to him, he's going to kill you. So... Getting a little bit of investment towards stumble can really save your team in the long run because you can hit these guys right where it hurts. 
But be careful, especially with these exploders, because if you hit them in the weak spot, you might not get a chance to stumble them. You might just outright kill them. So you might want to aim a little bit high until we have them in a safe spot, and then you can take them out. So let's talk about wretches. Wretches are pretty straightforward, in my opinion. All they do is spit. Now, they can rotate a little bit as they spit, but really all you need to do is run away from the spit. They're not going to move and spit at the same time. They sit as a turret and then just blah, 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 like this. You don't have to worry about them chasing you while they're spitting. Something to note about these wretches is after they get done spitting, they're like, Oh no, don't hurt me. Stop it. I don't want to play anymore. And one thing that's really funny is when they're hiding, you'll see them hiding and they crouch like this. <laughs> and then when they're ready, they'll come back out to play and be like, Okay, I want to spit some more. And then they'll try to spit on you again. Be careful if this does hit you. Because this can affect your healing, this can affect your speed, this can cause damage to you. The wretches can be pretty nasty as they upgrade, for a lot of reasons, I guess. But a couple of the reasons is that they can reduce your stats. And really, the easiest way to deal with them is just hit them. If you have enough stumble, they'll topple over and that'll stop their spit. And if you hit them in the weak spot, you can almost guarantee you're going to stumble them. And after you stumble them, <laughs> they're pretty much just free free shots, free meat. So just keep hitting them in the weak spot and eventually they'll die. But something you'll notice here is when they die, they leave a puddle behind them. So that explosion that they do isn't going to hit you. But if you happen to be within their blah, 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 that they leave behind, that's going to hurt you. A couple more things I want to show you about countering mutations. One of which is sleepers. So one of the best ways to counter sleepers is just listen. So if you go ahead and you take a peek here, what you might hear is some snarling, some blah, 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 blah. So if you hear that, start taking a look around your corners and stuff like that because what's going to happen is going to be a sleeper somewhere. You don't want the sleeper to grab you. And there's so many different ways you can deal with sleepers, but they only have about, I don't know, what, one HP or something like that. So you just got to shoot them. I mean, frankly, you could punch them. If you get close enough to them, they, it's just a baby. Just punch it, okay? Now, in terms of other things to deal with here, I have a flashbang and a stun gun. I want to show you a little bit about what that looks like. Oh, God, he's here. So I can flash... And you see how I just saved myself because he was about to go ahead and explode on me? <laughs> so flashes work on every single mutation. Make sure you utilize them. And you can use a flashbang against pretty much anything in this game and it's going to be useful. But you just saw a very real example right there of how it could be very helpful up against something like an exploder. Oh god. Another example here is something like a tall boy. If you run up to the tall boy and stun him, that gives you some time to get away. <laughs> Sun guns are very, very, very useful. Especially if you are crowded up in an area like this you need to wrap around and pop them like that don't be afraid of using your stun guns and stun guns get extra reuse chances as they level up and also they increase the amount of stun that they get and to kind of give you an idea of ow here get out of my way that's what i meant about just hitting the stingers but to kind of give you an idea what i meant about just staying away from tall boys and then creating distance with obstacles around you this is kind of what that looks like stay away from me and then you can just sit here and kite them all day they don't know what to do they're dumb hi how you doing this guy's even stuck on this thing right here, the chandelier, huh? Is this always this way? Dude, that's silly. One other trick I really like is using doors. You can use doors to stumble. They just don't know what to do about them for some reason. Yeah, they're very dumb about doors. So you can just keep doing this, and they're like, No! What are you doing? And then one final thing I'd really like to show you here is the corruption cards. I'm not going to go through every single one, but I want you to understand and be able to pay attention to these. So what you'll see is we have monstrous tall boys, monstrous armored wretches, and monstrous stingers. Now take a look at these extra modifiers. We have monstrous, we have hardened, and we have quick. So what monstrous does is it increases the amount of health that they have, and it doubles their damage. Another thing you'll see is that hardened on the tall boys here makes it so they take way less damage from explosives. And you'll also see that they attack way faster, too. The wretches here, they have armored on them right now, which makes it so you can't hit their weak spot. Gunk is going to make it so that you will reduce your reload speed, your swap speed, and your use speed. And adhesive makes it so you move even slower. This one also has the monstrous modifier to increase damage. And then for stingers here, we have monstrous to increase damage, but you'll also see that the congeal creates a blinding and slowing effect, so it'll get all over your face, you can't really see what's going on, and they attack faster. Understanding these is really important because it helps you decide what you're going to buy at the vendor. Now, you can go ahead and just try to blow everything up all the time. That does work in some scenarios if you have a kit for it. But if you don't have that opportunity, understanding what's coming your way can be a really big deal. So pay attention to these. And if you skip through this, you're like, oh, man, I went ahead and I went through all this and I can't see what they're doing anymore. You can always just come back to it. If I ready up here and then I click tab or well, yeah, tab and then active cards, you can just come up here and look at them again. Okay.
So make sure you understand these and read them and know what's coming your way. It'll help you understand the game so much better. Now you might be wondering, well, what about snitches? I have a whole set of videos about snitches. I have Never Alert Again, and I think I also have Just Don't Get Hit as a video as well. But we talk about stun guns. We talk about how to tell the difference between a mutated snitch and a regular snitch, which by the way, it's just about their bulbs. And we talk about how you can stumble them down. I got whole videos about snitches, but basically all you do is just blow them up and stumble them over, and then make sure you know what you're dealing with a mutated versus a regular snitch. In terms of bosses, I also have videos on bosses, and I plan to make dedicated videos towards bosses as well. If you want to see some of those videos, please consider subscribing. We also stream just about every single night on twitch.tv slash swingpoint. I'd love to see you guys there. Link will be in the description and also the top comments. If you found this useful at all or helpful, please share with your friends, and please consider leaving a like. And with that, thank you guys so much, and I'll see you in the next video that we do around here.